Now, what if you want or what if you need a noise figure which is greater than the minimum noise figure? So might, you might stop and say, well, wait a minute, what, don't I always want the minimum noise figure? And the answer is no, because sometimes you may need to trade off noise figure for gain or for stability, or as we'll see later, for visoir. So sometimes you need to make a deliberate effort to increase the noise figure so as to achieve other design goals. So how do you do that in a principled way? Well, first, let me introduce you to this idea. The locus of values of the source reflection coefficient for which the noise figure is a constant turns out to be a circle. So if we make a map of the real part versus the imaginary part of the source reflection coefficient, it turns out that reflection coefficients that yield constant noise figure are all on a circle. In the center of that circle, we can call C sub F. In the radius of that circle, we can call R sub F. Now just think about this for a second. If we're trying to minimize the noise figure, that reflection coefficient is right there. Any other reflection coefficient is represented by a circle with a greater radius. And we can determine those parameters. The center of that circle is given by gamma sub opt over one plus n sub f. n sub f is this thing here, which depends on the minimum noise figure, the normalized resistance, and the optimum source reflection coefficient. So we see that the center of this circle is defined entirely by these uh, parameters, gamma sub opt, f sub min, the normalized load resistance, and these are things that are normally specified in the data sheets for RF transistors. I also need the radius of that circle. Turns out the radius of that circle is given by this expression, entirely in terms of gamma sub opt and this parameter n sub f. So now if we want to determine all the values of gamma sub s, which give us a certain noise figure, what we do is we plug in the noise figure that we're interested in exploring here, calculate n sub f. That gives us the center and radius of the circle. And now we know all the values of gamma sub s that give us that particular noise figure. And then you see, of course, that the radius of the circle goes to zero as the noise figure of interest approaches the minimum noise figure. So here's an example to show this idea. Same transistor, same frequency. So we have the same S parameters, same reference impedance, same noise parameters same normalized load resistance. So we're starting off with the same example that we uh, did previously, but now we're going to consider noise figures greater than the minimum noise figure. So we want to explore the possible combinations of gain and noise figure available here. And just remember, this transistor is only conditionally stable, so whatever values of gain and noise figure we come up with makes sense only if we see that the transistor is stable for those particular choices. So a typical thing to do here would be to plot the stability circles. So that's what I've done here. This is uh, the map of reflection coefficient, both gamma sub s and gamma sub l. This circle here would be the outline circle of the Smith chart if we were doing Smith charts. I plotted now the stability circles. So here is the input stability circle, at least a part of it that exists within the span of this uh, diagram. Here is the output stability circle, at least the part of it that exists within the span of this particular figure. And I've also shown the stable and unstable regions because I've already gone ahead and calculated those uh, regions by looking at the center of these stability circles and determining whether they're stable or unstable at the centers. So you should do this. This is an excellent exercise. I'm just skipping to the uh, result. So where in this map are we allowed to be? Well, obviously, since the uh, stability circles have ended up the way they have, the range of acceptable reflection coefficients all lie within this region here, right? They must all have values less than one, or at least magnitudes less than one, and they must be in the stable regions of the input and output stability circles. So the crosshatched region here are allowed values. Let's look at just gamma s. So gamma s, we're looking at the output stability circle over here, and then I'm showing noise figure circles. So for example, a noise figure circle for F min of 0.73 dB is a circle that has radius zero. 
So this is the value of gamma s right here that gives us the minimum noise figure. And that corresponds to the result that we obtained in the previous example. Now if I want to go to a noise figure of 1 dB, that corresponds to this circle here. So all the values of gamma sub s that give me a noise figure of 1 dB are on that circle. We see that all these values yield stable solutions because I'm in the stable region of uh, gamma sub s here as determined uh, previously on the previous slide. If I want to go to 2 dB noise figure, then all the allowed values of gamma s or all the values of gamma s that give me 2 dB exactly noise figure are on this circle. We see that all these values are still stable. But if I go to 3 dB noise figure, then all the values of gamma sub s that give me exactly 3 dB are on this circle. And we see there are some values of gamma sub s that are corresponding to unstable solutions. So we see that up to uh, a value slightly greater than 2 dB noise figure, everything's stable. If I let the noise figure become higher than that, then I end up with uh, possibly unstable solutions depending on which values of gamma sub s I choose. Right? So I'm not saying that a noise figure of 3 dB results in an unstable solution because, for example, I could choose a value over here, which is safely stable. But if I choose a value over here, I get a noise figure of 3 dB and an unstable solution. Now let's assume that I conjugate match the output and then see what the transducer power gain is. So again, I'm looking at just gamma sub s here, but I'm assuming that I'm maximizing now the TPG given the value of gamma s that I've selected. And that, of course, means that the output is conjugate matched. So if I conjugate match the output and then consider what I get, here are the possibilities. So for example, I can compute all the values of gamma s, which when the output is conjugate matched, give me 18.5 dB. One of those solutions, in fact, is the solution we obtained in the previous example, right there. Remember, we minimized noise figure. We got gamma s equals gamma sub opt, and that gave us a TPG of 18.5 dB. And then on this circle right here, these are all the other values of gamma sub s that would give us 18.5 dB. But of course, they would correspond to larger noise figures because I'm going away from this minimum noise figure point. And then there are some values here on this circle that correspond, of course, to unstable solutions. So I wouldn't want to be over there. Here's the available gain circle for 20 dB. Let's say perhaps 18.5 dB was inadequate and I had a requirement uh, to go to 20 dB. Well, the available gain circle for 20 dB is right here. And what we see is that uh, we have a number of solutions which are stable. We have a number of solutions which are unstable. And no solution which is corresponding to the minimum noise figure. So there will be a noise figure circle here somewhere which touches the 20 dB circle and that will be the smallest noise figure that we can achieve for an available gain of 20 dB. So now we get a feeling for how we can trade off noise figure and gain in a principled way. So this also should tell you something about why RF engineers like to use Smith charts is because this is all happening in a domain in which the Smith chart is normally superimposed. So you can see that all these circles and arcs correspond to things going on in the Smith chart. And once you figure out where you want to be in terms of reflection coefficient gamma sub s, now you have a quick way to get to a solution which uh, corresponds to a match that then gives you that reflection coefficient.